Hey, it's Darius Clark, and now we're going to take a look at the review report under SSAE, Statements on Standards for Attestation Engagements. Like any review report, it does not contain an opinion, but rather a disclaimer. While no opinion is expressed, a review report does contain a conclusion. Now, the conclusion could be that the CPA states, we are not aware of any material modifications that need be made to the subject matter or to the responsible party's written assertion. And if we're able to say that, if we're able to say we are not aware of any material modifications that need to be made, that's what's known as an unmodified conclusion. We're giving limited assurance. Notice we're not providing an opinion, but we are giving limited assurance. Also notice the term unmodified conclusion, not unmodified opinion, because no opinion is given in a review. Now, if we don't have an unmodified conclusion, then we could have a modified conclusion. And it would state something like this, except for the effects of, we are not aware of any material modification that should be made to the subject matter. Note that if there is a modified conclusion, the CPA must report directly on the subject matter and not on the responsible party's written assertion. So if it's an unmodified conclusion, then you can report on either the subject matter or the responsible party's written assertion. But if there's a modified conclusion, then the CPA must report directly on the subject matter, not on the responsible party's written assertion. And they love that on the exam. Now with some reports, you have to know the specific standardized format. What's in section one, what's in section two, but you need to know that for a review report under SSAE, there's no standardized format. And this allows the report to be tailored to the circumstances of the specific engagement. And that's because we're not reviewing financial statements, right? We're either reporting on the responsible party's written assertion, or we can report directly on whatever the subject matter is. And that's why there's no standardized format for a review under SSAE. So, General rule, CPA can report either on the responsible party's written assertion or the CPA can report directly on the subject matter. Now, the exception, if the CPA qualifies the conclusion because of material misstatements, then the CPA must report directly on the subject matter and not report on the written assertion. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is very wordy, and it is, and the exam loves it for that reason. So the CPA's report under SSAE can be on the responsible party's written assertion or it can be directly on the subject matter as long as it's an unmodified conclusion. But if the CPA qualifies the conclusion because there's material misstatements, then the CPA must report directly on the subject matter and not on the written assertion. You will see this on your test. Now, if reporting on the responsible party's assertion, then you know it must be an unmodified conclusion. The assertion should accompany the review report or should be clearly stated somewhere in the report. Let's try this question. In a review under SSAE, which of the following is generally correct? A, the sections of the report must be presented in a specific order. No, we said. B, the CPA should report on the assertion provided by the responsible party, not directly on the subject matter says generally correct. Well, generally the CPA could report on the assertion provided by the responsible party or directly on the subject matter. So B is wrong. C, the CPA should report directly on the subject matter and not on the assertion. No, it could be either or generally. How about D? If reporting on the responsible party's assertion, the assertion should accompany the review report or be clearly stated in the report. Yes, D is correct. If reporting on the responsible party's assertion, this means it must be an unmodified conclusion, the assertion should accompany the review report or be clearly stated in the report. Generally, the CPA reports on an assertion provided by the responsible party or reports directly on the subject matter. But in the case of a modified conclusion, that's when you can report only on what? The subject matter. But this question doesn't indicate a modified conclusion. This just says which of the following is generally correct. How about this? In a review engagement under SSAE, if the CPA does not qualify the conclusion, the CPA may report A, only on the responsible party's written assertion. No. B, only on the subject matter and not on the responsible party's written assertion. No. A and B are out. 
Look at C. On either the subject matter or on the responsible party's written assertion, I like C because the facts indicate what? It says if the CPA does not qualify the conclusion, that means it's an unmodified conclusion, and that means the CPA can report on either the subject matter or the responsible party's written assertion. We're going with letter C. C is correct, and this is exactly the kind of question you've got to be ready for. All right, the elements of the review report under SSAE. What can we expect to find what's required to be in the report? You need a report title that includes the word independent. Report of the independent CPA. Notice not the word auditor, because this is not an audit. We don't want to confuse the reader, but a title that includes the word independent. The address E, we're going to address the report to the responsible party and certain language that's expected, like we have reviewed the subject matter or we have reviewed management's assertion for the time period involved. And then we'll identify the criteria against which the subject matter was evaluated. Maybe we were engaged to review management's assertion that they put enough money into the profit sharing plan for the year. And maybe the criteria is that management is expected to put 10% of profits into the profit sharing plan. And that's how we would identify the criteria against which the subject matter was evaluated. We need a statement that identifies the responsible party and its responsibility. We're not the responsible party. We're the CPA. And what's our responsibility? To express a conclusion. And that will be mentioned in the report that our responsibility is to express a conclusion. What other elements are required in a review report under SSAE? You'll need a statement that the review was conducted in accordance with SSAE. And you need to know that SSAE, which stands for Statements on Standards for Attestation Engagements, is issued by the AICPAs. You'll also need a statement in the review report that standards require the CPA to plan and perform the engagement to obtain what? Limited assurance whether any material modifications should be made. You'll also need a statement that a review is substantially less in scope than an examination, not an audit. Don't use the term audit because this has nothing to do with financial statements. An examination is audit-like in that it's a higher level of service than a review, but we can't use the term audit unless we're looking at financial statements that are historic. And in this sense, we're telling the reader that we didn't do the highest level of service. We just did a review which is less in scope than an examination. We're going to disclaim an opinion and say, we do not express an opinion. We're going to express our belief that the review provides a reasonable basis for the conclusion. And now for the conclusion, because that's also a required element of a review report under SSAE. A conclusion about whether any material modifications should be made to the subject matter or the assertion. We might say, we are not aware of any material modification that should be made to the subject matter or the written assertion. That would be an unmodified conclusion. And remember, with an unmodified conclusion, we could report on the subject matter or the written assertion. But what if it's a modified conclusion because we found material misstatements that were not pervasive? Then we would say, except for the effects of, we are not aware of any material modification that should be made to the subject matter. Because if there's a modified conclusion, what? We have to report directly on the subject matter and not on the written assertion. So for material misstatements that are not pervasive, we are allowed to do a modified conclusion. Notice the term except for. Very similar to when we have a qualified opinion, but we're not giving any opinion here. We still use the term except for in our modified conclusion because we have material but not pervasive misstatements. Finally, we have a signature of the CPA firm, city and state where the review report is being issued from, and the date of the review report. All right, which of the following are required elements in a review report under SSAE? Letter A says the name of the CPA signing the review report. No, the name of the firm would be in the signature block, not the name of the CPA. Be a statement that identifies the responsible party. Yes. C, a statement that the review provides a reasonable basis for the opinion. C is wrong because there's no opinion provided 
in a review. The statement would say the review provides a reasonable basis for the conclusion, not the opinion. And A is wrong because the name of the CPA signing the review report is not a required element. What's the required element is the name of the CPA firm signing the review report. If the subject matter of a review engagement under SSAE has a misstatement that is material but not pervasive, which of the following is correct? A, the CPA should report on the subject matter, not the assertion. Yes, remember that. If there are misstatements, then you have to report on the subject matter with that modified conclusion. B, the CPA should restrict the distribution of the report to the engaging party. No, A is correct. If the subject matter of a review engagement under SSAE has a misstatement that is material but not pervasive, or has a few misstatements that are material but not pervasive, the CPA should report on the subject matter, not on the written assertion. And the CPA need not restrict the distribution of the report to the engaging party just because there's a misstatement that's material but not pervasive. I'm Darius Clark from I-75 CPA Review, and if you found this audit video easy to follow, the right teacher makes all the difference. And this video was taken right out of the I-75 CPA review course. And if you need help passing audit or any of the other parts of the CPA exam, maybe you need to get on the right road. Get yourself on I-75 and take it to your next pass.